And on that, when you're going through the repair list, you will probably at least half of when you're doing these, somebody's gonna say, yeah, but my Uncle Jeb could do it for cheaper. Your response is, well, I don't, Uncle Jeb doesn't work for me and I, I don't have an Uncle Jeb. And secondly, if he can do it for cheaper, why hadn't he done it yet? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they're gonna be like, I, Sometimes they'll say something like, well, I don't have the money to, and my response to that was, I've got contractors that I've worked with that are professional, and I've worked with and have established relationships for years. They're bonded, insured, they have full crews. Now, if your uncle is a bonded and licensed contractor with a full team that can knock this out for me in a matter of a couple of weeks, because, well, then I'll hire him, but I need to see proof of work, and if he'll come in and quote it, and give me you know firm numbers on it that I can believe. Now, if he's got for offering to do it for me for less than material costs, then there's, it's, it's fake. And what I can look at right here is my repair sheet says that the material costs are going to be 15, and your uncle Jeb, you're telling me can do it for 15. That's not possible. But but by them saying my uncle Jeb can do it, they're not really serious about the uncle Jeb. What they're trying to do is they're just trying to get any any excuse to get out of the conversation and you gotta reel it back in. You might be able to side sidestep the conversation for a moment, because you can see that they're feeling uncomfortable, but you need to get right back to it and, and just start pushing back on their rebuttals. They're like, well, my Uncle Jeb can do this. Well, sorry, your yeah. Uncle Jeb ain't a part of this and, damn transaction. And the whole point of doing the seller net sheet is to start fishing out those rebuttals, because you don't want to get to the point where you have your agreement on the table uh, and that's when rebuttal, you want to go ahead and start fishing out the little ones so that by the time it's, it, it, you're ready to sign, there's nothing less to, uh, to overcome. You, might, you should never bring out any paperwork until the agreement's made. The only time the paperwork should come out is after all numbers have been clarified, closing dates, who's paying for what. Once all that's done, that's when you bring out the paperwork. Mm -hmm. But going through that seller net sheet, which is a cool term, I've never used that one before. <laughs> but as you go through that, you're either going to bring these people to reality, which is what you need to do, or B, they're just not going to believe that the numbers are thrown down, and at that point in time, you're, you don't have a deal. It needs to be thrown into a follow-up cycle and just keep going. But do everything you possibly can. Like if if I know that I need to be at this property at 45, they're asking 90. That doesn't mean I give up. I'm there for another hour and a half working with them until they flat out said, get the hell out of my house. I see so many people that are like nervous about making this offer and they're like, well, you know, based on this, I can do 45. I know you're at 90. We'll just follow up some other time because they're in a hurry to get the hell out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Don't be that investor. You need to be the investor that just throws a tent in the front yard and is like, all right, I know you need to talk to your wife for a bit. I'm gonna hang out in the front yard. I got my laptop and my Wi-Fi connection with me. I'm just gonna chill in the front yard. And you just sit there for an hour and then go back and knock on the door and be like, have y'all y'all done talking? Cause I'm ready to get a paperwork signed. Mm -hmm. Don't just walk away from the contract until they are ready to just flat out, like throw you in jail for it. Yeah, and we could literally do a full show on a seller net sheet, but just to give you a quick summary, at least the ones I, I've, been, I've used in the past, uh, the whole point of the Southern Net Sheet is to show them that the, di the difference between your offer and the offer they could make with the realtor or whatever is not that far off. And the biggest difference is the amount of hassle and the amount of time they have to go through with option they want their rebuttal versus you. So a Southern Net Sheet will list out uh, the sales price, then you back out your title fees, then you back out your realtor fees, then you back out your your uh, all of those your contractor fees, contingencies, et cetera, and your, and your payments, hold, you know, holding costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then also the time of like three months, or the difference between my offer that is what five, ten grand, but yet we could be done in in a, in a week, guaranteed versus maybe three months. Yes, yeah. guaranteed this price versus maybe you're not a professional, do you really think you can get this done in a three month period? So those net sheets work really well for data intensive people mm -hmm. and it works semi well for a lot of the emotional people. The emotional people, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on it, but I'd start running my numbers myself and I would just mm -hmm. let them follow along with it and wait until they came back and pushed back on me. And, and real quick, just cause we're on it, a uh, quick shout out to Jason Riney cause he found an app. Um, so everybody's always kind of nervous about when it's your stuff, but when you can use a third party app, a third party paperwork, whatever, then it's not you telling them, it's somebody else telling them. So I think it was a capital title that had a, an app on an iPad that was essentially a, net a seller, a net sheet. So then it's, it's capital title telling you that you're probably gonna make this much, not me, the investor. 
That's a good so, point. So yeah. if, if, if you can figure out what that is, we can drop it in the comments yeah, later. Honest, Jason. So we've gone through, we've already discussed a lot of the terms. We've discussed the offer. We need to make sure that the seller understand who's paying for who's paying for taxes, who's paying for title, do we have inspection periods, when are we gonna close, are there contingencies? We need to have all of that aired and figured out after we've gone through and made our, made our initial pitch on the offer. Once we have solidified all of our numbers, a lot of times I'm gonna go through with the seller. So we're agreeing that if I close this within the next seven days, you'll sell it to me for 70,000 cash or 60,000 cash or whatever it ends up being. You're gonna move out prior to then at closing, you're willing to accept this is a final net. You're going to pay the closing costs for this, the title fees. You're going to pay that. I'm going to pay this, this, and this. And we're going to place $500 in escrow, and you're going to give me a three-day option on it. We agree, we, we agree on all that. Yes? Okay. Once I've got them to verbally agree that this is what we've agreed upon, then I bring out the contract. And once I bring out the contract, and I was like, what? And I always call it a purchase agreement. I always call it a contract we're on here, but I always call it a purchase agreement. So I'm going to explain to the seller. So what I need to do is put all of this that we've agreed to in a purchase agreement so we can submit it to title. The title uses that purchase agreement to fill out all the paperwork and get all that process done. So now all we have to do is put what we've agreed to in writing. And I'll pull out the purchase agreement and I'll just go ahead and fill in. So yes, we've agreed to a $70,000 cash purchase. You've agreed to give it to me on in closing seven days. And I'll just go through and just re restate everything that we've agreed to and let them watch me fill it out and then I'll hand it to them and just be like I need a signature there 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 and there and I in close to 10 years of doing this have never never that I can think of had a seller read the contract mm -hmm. I cannot think I, I cannot think of a single time where I had a seller sit down and read 10 pages of purchase agreements allegedly allegedly He's allegedly never seen them read it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever have. It's it's because I've gotten to the point before the purchase agreement ever comes out. They know that they're going to sell it to me for that price. There's no there's no rebuttals really. It's just and you built that rapport of trust. Yeah. So once we've got to that point, all I do is hand them is like you know this is this and then boom signatures come out and then we're good to go. So before we get to that point though. Before I actually bring out the paperwork, let's talk about the offer because that was something that we were going to do today. Let's talk about the numbers and let's talk about the actual offer. So I've worked with them up until now to come to an agreed upon spot and or as we get to that, let's say I'm trying to make a $60,000 cash offer and I can really see the further and further along we're getting into this that that $60,000 is just not going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Well, what I might do from there is you always want to make at least, in my opinion, three offers. You can make four, five, six, seven, eight, doesn't matter, but you need to make multiple offers because it's a psychological piece. Whenever you tell somebody, you give somebody a yes or no answer, if they don't like it at all, the immediate answer is gonna be no. If I give somebody multiple offers, well then they start analyzing in their own head the benefits of one over the other, which one do they like more, and then it's more open and apt for negotiation. It's like, well if I offered you X, Y, or Z, which one makes most sense to you? And then they're going to start looking at it in the back of their head. Well, with X, it doesn't happen as fast, but I can make more money. With Y, I can make a whole lot more money, but you know it's going to take even longer. And I really wish I just had some upfront money. Upfront money means I have to accept this really low offer, but that gives me money right now. When you know maybe is there an option where you could possibly give me some money now and some money later? And now it's a negotiation versus just a yes or no. Like if I just come to you and I say, mm -hmm. will you accept $60,000 for this house? No. But what if I come to you? Well, right now, traditionally what I'd prefer to do is just come in and purchase this house cash. That's the simplest for me. That gives me the easiest range of possibilities. As a cash offer, this will be closed out in as little as seven days. As soon as we get clear title, you can go on down the road, put the money in your back pocket, we're done. Now, if that isn't something that you, you're interested in and or if that number's too low, I can probably get you a little bit more money. Where do you need to be at ballpark? And then... When you, would you do that if you think... Because that goes against the whole throw out a number and just shut up. Because well, yeah, I mean... Is that, is that, do you use that strategy when you have a feeling that 60 is not going to cut it? Yeah, and, I, and what I'm not trying to do up here is like... 
a full-on role play. I'm just trying to right. give some guidance here. This is all going to be gauged upon your conversations with the seller. If I'm having a conversation with the seller and I'm talking about numbers and I can quickly see that they're starting to shut down, I'll pull back and I'll change the subject. Mm -hmm. And then as I start seeing their, their, their ability to conversate on business come back again, I'll bounce back into the conversation and I was like, you know, we've got several different ways we can structure this transaction. Cash is going to be my best option. But if you'd allow me, you know, let's say nine months to have this paid completely off. I might be able to give you a little bit of cash up front so that way you've got some money to move, get someplace else going, but I can definitely give you a lot more money if you'll give me not six to nine months to completely pay you off. This is Steve. Steve is a successful real estate investor. Steve is wearing glasses, so therefore you know he's a successful real estate investor. You go, Steve. Go, Steve, go. Go get those dollars. You see that blue dot? That's Steve. Just looking at houses left and right. Let him go. Get the Driving for Dollars app today. All without leaving your car.